Kubota has won it. Her 17th victory on the LPGA circuit. 69 today. So for our CBS Sports Announce crew, Jim Nance saying so long from the DuPont Country Club in Wilmington, Delaware. This is CBS. Paint, 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 paint your car. The Mako Ambassador Paint Service. Quality and value. You better make it. Get this kind of value, this kind of quality. Just $169.95. You better make it. Make it. The Ambassador Paint Service at your local Mako Center. Just $169.95. Beautiful. I started out life normal enough, but then I started listening to 98 Rock. There was no talking to me. I was an angry youth living for rock and roll. Later, I found out that everybody listened to 98 Rock, and it even helped me get big. Then when I got in the real world, I learned 98 Rock's 40-minute free rides give me tons of music nonstop. Now I'm all grown up and still listening to 98 Rock. Killer classics and cool new stuff, too. You know, I still live for rock and roll. 98 Rock, it does somebody good. Thanks for watching WBAL-TV, Channel 11. Coming up next on CBS Sports, the NCAA Championships. for the Men's Lacrosse Championship and CBS Sports continuing coverage of the NCAA Championships. I'm Jim Gray. Today here at Franklin Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Syracuse will be looking to continue their dominance of college lacrosse. Should they beat the Princeton Tigers this afternoon, they will have won four out of the last five collegiate lacrosse championships. Now, Franklin Field is one of the most historic fields in the entire nation. Among many other things, it played host to the very first Army-Navy football game all the way back in 1899. So just like this field, lacrosse has a very long history. It was one of the very first games played on this continent more than 450 years ago. Created by the Indians, it was played to prove bravery and readiness for combat. The game evolved in North America and was introduced on the collegiate level back in 1881, with fittingly Princeton playing in the very first game. They lost to Harvard at the old polo ground. Then 90 years later, in 1971, the first NCAA championship game was played with Cornell defeating Maryland. Now, since that time, three teams have dominated collegiate lacrosse. They are North Carolina, Johns Hopkins, and Syracuse. And all three of those teams advanced here to Philadelphia for this year's Final Four. Syracuse defeated Johns Hopkins 21-16, while Princeton upset defending champion North Carolina 16-14. Joining me now is Lee Felsmo, a former collegiate player at Bowling Green, and he is now covering his 11th NCAA College Lacrosse Championship. And Lee, Syracuse has had great teams over the past five years. How does this team compare? Well, Jim, this team is an exact replica of those great teams, except they're younger. This is a retold version of the run-and-gun offense that Roy Simmons has made famous. But they're younger, as I mentioned. Eight of their top nine scorers are underclassmen. The one exception is their leader, Tom Marichek, number 42 on the attack. He comes into this game with 45 goals. He'll be the center of attention for the defense of Princeton. But I think the key is that I believe Syracuse can win this game without any goals from Tom Marichek. That's how deep they are in offense. I think one of the impact players may very well be number 11, Jamie Archer. Now, Princeton, on the other hand, leads just 2 and 13 five years ago. Obviously, they don't have the talent in this game that Syracuse has, and they don't have the experience. But can they overcome that? Well, they can. They're going to have to control the tempo, and Coach Bill Tierney is known for getting the most out of every team he coaches. Today, in order to win, he will have to take the air out of the ball. He will have to make sure he has it for more minutes than Syracuse, and he will have to make sure he gets more ground balls. 
he has those mandates. Syracuse will give you the chances to win. They'll run and gun up and down the field knowing that if you score 12, they'll score 13. Lacrosse is kind of a mixture of soccer and hockey. It's played with 10 men on each team on the field. Three attackmen, three midfielders, three defensemen, and one goalie. And Leaf, who are the key people for Princeton? Well, three All-Americans will lead this team. From the offensive end, Tortolani leads the team in goals. Andrew Moe is the fastest player on the team. And Bacha Galupo is the best goalie in Division I lacrosse. And they're coached by Bill Turney. It's his fifth season at Princeton. Now for Syracuse, on the other hand, who should we keep an eye on? Tom Marichek is a four-year All-American player. He's the focus on offense. Charlie Lockwood, a great midi, and Saran will have to have the game of his life today. Syracuse is coached by Roy Simmons Jr. His 22nd season, and he's taken them to four national championships. Good crowd on hand here today. It is chilly blanket weather. Temperature is in the mid-50s as we get ready to start today's game. And Jim Princeton will have to get that early possession to dictate the tempo of this game. It is very critical against Syracuse, who scores most of their goals in the first quarter. And that's exactly what Princeton was able to do in their semifinal game against North Carolina, as well as in their quarterfinal game against Maryland. And Greg Waller picks up the faceoff and advances towards the Syracuse net. You can see Syracuse looking for individual matchups. A little bit of confusion there. Princeton now settling their offense, taking it from either in front or behind the goal. The critical thing, they want the good matchup. Calkins sends it out to Andrew Moe. Winds up, and he scores! One nothing, just that simple and easy. Andrew Moe scores on Saran, who's a little bit nervous, a little bit unsettled in his first championship game. That shot he normally saves. This one bounces over his shoulder. So Princeton with a quick strike, and we'll be right back. CBS Sports coverage of the 1992 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships is sponsored by Pringles. So fresh, once you pop, you can't, you can't, you can't stop. The card, the American Express card, don't leave home without it. And by Krylon, the no runs, no drips, no errors, spray paint. Wild and tangy. There's a new Pringles. Barbecue. Pop the wild, tangy taste of new Pringles barbecue. This is light. Pringles light. These are light. Let's put Pringles Light up against these bag chips. There's 25% less fat in Pringles than in these. And they're a lot less greasy. Once you pop, 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 pop you can't stop. You are here. She has the traveler's checks here. There's got to be a better way. Here's one now. New American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. In Kalani, legend says, take a deep breath after it rains and that fresh, clean feeling will last the rest of your journey. There's a bit of this in every bar of Irish Spring. Ah, the lost and fresh scent of Irish Spring. The Irish never quit. Iron Mike on rust. I hate rust. Iron Mike on tough. This is tough. Rust tough. This is rust. Oil? The dictionary defines tough as strong, not easily influenced. Like me. The definition of oleum is... We sprayed this rusty metal plate with fast-drying rust top. Exposed the rusted metal, then placed it in the torture salt fog chamber. The rust didn't spread, it stayed top. You want top? What do you want? Holy. Oh, Got rust, get top. Rust top. Back at Franklin Field, Princeton out to a quick 1-0 lead. Leaf, not everyone's totally familiar with the rules of lacrosse, so can you give us a brief overview? Lacrosse is played on a field similar in size to a football field. Although it's slightly shorter and a little wider, the big difference is that the goals are set inside the playing field, leaving 12 yards behind those goals. The 10 players that make up each team are three attackmen in the offensive end, three midfielders that play offense and defense, and three defensemen protecting their goal area. The goalie works in a nine-foot radius crease. Now, to protect against offside, the three attackmen must stay in their offensive zone. And the three defensemen and the goalie must stay in the defensive end. Now, Princeton has won nine straight games, including two in this tournament. 
And they've jumped out to a very quick 3-0 lead, and that's got to be very pleasing to head coach Bill Tierney. And they did it on the sensational accuracy of their quarterback, Kevin Lowe. The All-American finds Tortolani coming off the crease area. What a target he is at 6'3", 2-0 the score for Princeton. And right after that, look inside. Brian Tomio slicing the defense of Syracuse. The third straight goal for the Princeton Tigers. Their speed has really surprised Syracuse. They have everything going their way, and Syracuse really has to be totally shell-shocked here. This is their biggest period, the first period. They've outscored opponents 74-41 to 41 in this period, and they just can't get on track. Well, finally, they have an excellent opportunity to do that. This is six on five, an extra man play for Syracuse. They'll be patient and work it around the horn here. It's a shot by Lockwood, and it's knocked away before it gets to the goal. Bacigalupo still yet to save a ball. Jim, we've seen this all through the first quarter. Princeton getting a stick on almost every feed or shot of Syracuse. Stolen back by Syracuse. They'll have another attempt. And here's Steve Bettinger. Sends it across, and Marichek fans it. Textbook, Syracuse transition, a layup missed by Marichek. Well, we have the MVP of the 1971 tournament joining us on the sidelines. Let's go down to Bob Rule. In this first period, Syracuse has been dominated by Princeton. Their, be their bench looks stunned. They are not playing to win the game. They are playing not to lose. It's a whole different mindset. Well, they better get a wake-up call rather quickly, Lee. At what point do you push the panic button? Is it still too early? This team has never faced panic. They haven't been shut out for 111 quarters. That's almost 30 games of lacrosse. Well, it looks as though that streak will come to an end as Princeton will inbound the ball with a little time remaining here in the second period. Shot is taken and missed by Andrew Moe, and that could have really stretched it. And Jim, one thing that's very obvious is that the speed and quickness of Princeton is really stunning Syracuse. Syracuse is used to running away from the opposition. They can't run away from the Princeton Tigers in this first quarter. And there's an important breakup made right there, and that will give Syracuse the opportunity to regroup as the quarter ends with Syracuse trailing by three in a stunner. <laughs> Everybody hates to eat and run. We'd rather take it slow. But the way this life is going, gotta grab your food and go. And with all that running round, catches up with you at last. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. For acid indigestion or heartburn with headache, nothing's faster or more effective than Alka-Seltzer. Get yourself some Alka-Seltzer and you'll feel better fast. Today, Pectret Shoe Corporation announced a major retail expansion in 25 U.S. cities. When I see a company that looks like a good investment, I check it out myself. We make it easier to follow your own lead. At Charles Schwab, I can get quotes, financial news, and when I make a trade, commission savings. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. Jim Gray along with Lee Feldmo and Bob Rule. Princeton has jumped out to a 4-0 lead, and the faithful who've come down from New Jersey to see their Tigers are very happy with what they've seen so far. Well, Princeton continues to stun everybody with not only great defense, but great offense like this. The backside, John Bernstein on the power play, the extra man. He was waiting there for the backdoor shot to give Princeton a 5-0 lead. Then, moments later, Tortolani finds Andrew Moe fighting off a pick in the crease. We've seen that before. That's three goals from that crease area. The slashing midfielder is really doing a job against the defense of Syracuse. Well, who'd have thunk it? Certainly not Syracuse, and it's faithful. Bill Tierney's all smiles. There's a train station nearby, and I don't know if Roy Simmons Jr. would like to catch the first one out of town. Minute 18 left here in the first half. Here's Matt Ryder. Well, he's ended the doldrums. Syracuse is on the board. Penalty flag is thrown. They're going to wave off that flag. The goal will count. It's now 6-1, to one, and Syracuse finally has a bright spot. Coach Bill Tierney was very afraid of the ability of Matt Ryder, and this is why. He wants to make something happen, dives across the crease and scores. Important not only because it's the first goal for Syracuse, but this is really the first good shot they've had against the All-American goalie from Princeton. 
with the Orangemen on the board, Princeton should know that no lead is big enough, and they should know that from their own experience. They led 7-2 to two and 13-9 to nine in their semifinal game against North Carolina, and each time North Carolina came back and tied them. Coach Bill Tierney has told his team that let Syracuse have a run of two or three, but don't give them the four or five goal run. But Syracuse once again remains in control and in possession as the clock winds down here in the first half. Andy Moe being watched by Tom Gilmartin. Oh! Andy Moe unexpectedly doesn't let the clock run out, turns around and fires one and scores. Andy Moe is showing more foot speed and quickness than Syracuse has seen in the last three years. This guy is sensational. He is so quick and fast. The explosion here, watch, he'll make a little juke move to his left. Gil Martin commits, and then he explodes forward for the right-handed shot. The slide's too late, and he beats Saran over the shoulder. And if you put this in perspective, Leaf, it was just five years ago, Andy Moe was a freshman. He was on Bill Turney's first team that went 2-13. and 13. A total turnaround now. He took a year off to travel. He now comes back and is the focal point in a championship game on a team that's only lost two games all season. And we have a whistle and a penalty flag with just 36 seconds left here in the first half. And we're going to have a very costly mistake made by Princeton. Pushing foul on Scott Reinhardt and Bill Turney can't believe it. Not the time to make this mistake. You never want to go man down to this team. Syracuse is so explosive in the open field. Now you're giving them a man advantage. And even if Syracuse is to score a leaf, would you feel they would still be demoralized at halftime, or would that give them a real shot in the arm? Well, it is the emotional lift that they need here. The distance between these two teams is not as scary as the fact that the Syracuse offense really has not been on track. Well, that distance just decreased by one. Their main man, Tom Marichek, comes up with a goal. It's now 7-2. to two. And it was a textbook extra man play. It starts with Tom Marichek. He did a beautiful job as the quarterback of that extra man. Let's watch it. Here, it starts here with Marichek. The defense right here will follow the path of the ball counterclockwise, leaving him wide open to the right. Now, as it gets to the far side, they feed all the way across to the back door. And right there is Tom Marichek to redirect the shot in. Textbook extra man play. And Leaf, both teams have been a little lethargic on defense, flat-footed here in the last minute of play. Well, Syracuse is just getting back to where they're comfortable with their game. Princeton, a little bit afraid now of that explosive transition style that Syracuse is famous for. And Princeton has controlled the faceoff once again. And they may have a final shot on goal here as the first half winds down. Broken up, however, and it's taken away by Rick Beardsley, and that will end the first half. That shot won't count. But Princeton has got to be very pleased with what they've accomplished here in the first half. They've controlled the tempo of this game, Lee Felsmo. Dominated in every phase, but the important thing for Syracuse is that they've scored two of the last three goals. They've got some emotional stability in their offense. Let's go down to Bob Rule, who's with Syracuse coach Roy Simmons. Coach, what do you have to do to get back in this ball game? Well, we got to get the ball in the face off, play our kind of ball. You know, they've obviously taken the air out of the ball. This game seriously needs a shot clock, but they're patient. And we haven't been so patient. We need the ball a little more, but that's got to come from the faceoff. Halftime at the lacrosse championships in Syracuse. Trails by five. Hey, I'm vain. Of course I'm vain. That's why I comb my hair the way I do. I dress the way I do. That's why I stay in shape. To compete against men half your age takes a certain kind of power. That's why I play like an animal. The power of Power Stick. I give it everything I have every time I walk out there. 50% more wetness and odor fighters per stroke. This works best for me. I don't want people going around saying, whew, that Connors, he's tough to be around. Power Stick by Fabergé. Power that won't let you down. I told you I was vain. When you've got a tough case of athlete's foot, the itching, the cracking, the burning, you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough Actin, Tenactin. Clinically proven Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. Get Tough Actin, Tenactin. Dear Thompsons, I swear by Thompson's water seal, but recently when it ran out, my son finished with another brand. Then it rained. What a difference. Thompson's beat it up, the other brand nothing. Thanks for a product you can believe in. Marvin Snotty, Locust Grove, Virginia. Back at Franklin Field on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania, Princeton is leading Syracuse at halftime. There were three other NCAA lacrosse titles decided this season. And in Division III play, one of the great collegiate championship streaks of all time came to an end. 
Hobart, the 12-time defending Division III champion, had its streak ended in the semifinals by Nazareth College. It was a goal by Marty Kelly. 24 seconds into overtime, ended the streak and propelled Nazareth into the finals, where the Golden Flyers won their first title ever, defeating Roanoke. In women's action, Maryland won the Division I title, and Trenton State captured the Division III title. And CBS Sports coverage of the Men's Division I Lacrosse Championship will return after this word from your local station. To me, when a woman sweats, it just isn't sexy. Of course a guy's gonna sweat sometimes, but when you're close, who wants a guy that smells? Get closer with Arid Extra Extra Dry, the anti-odor antiperspirant. I trust Arid. Inside and out, Sears has your paint needs covered. Pick up weather beater exterior or easy living interior flat finishes. Your choice, only $10.99 a gallon. But hurry, this terrific paint sale ends soon. Princeton ahead, and it didn't take long as third period action got underway for them to expand upon their lead. They score first in quarter number three, and it's Scott Reinhardt, who's the leading scorer in the midfield position, just running right past Reggie Thorpe, the best long stick defenseman. And the slide from Tully comes too late. One-on-one -on -one again, right in Saran's face. That's goal number eight for Princeton. But it didn't take long for Syracuse to answer that goal with their feared transition game. This is Brian Tully bringing the ball down from the defensive end. He finds Duburn Reed in the middle of the field. Duburn Reed gets a lot of attention from the defense, gives it off to Archer, and Jamie Archer scores goal number three for Syracuse. And the Orangemen are a team that can really never be counted out. To put this in a little bit of perspective, they are to lacrosse, having won three of the last four titles. What Lombardi's Packers were in the 60s, what the Yankees were to baseball, and what the Celtics have been to basketball. So don't count them out, even though they trail by five. The only team to have won three straight national championships. Mad scramble for the ball. And a lot of intense hitting, really putting a hat on them. Jim, there's no question that in the third quarter here, Syracuse has come out to play. They know that their championship is in jeopardy. Princeton is knocking them all over the field. Not this half, says Coach Roy Simmons. Well, Saran comes all the way out of net, gets it ahead to Bettinger. To Jamie Archer, no! Great save, Bachkaloop rebound, Archer, it scores! What a great follow-up by Jamie Archer. He takes a low shot. He was going to shoot low right from the time he got the ball. And Bacigalupo ran low all the way. He went down to make the save, and then left the high shot wide open. The follow-up is what's key. Archer shoots, ball dribbles out, and Archer gets nailed as he picks up the loose ball. A follow-up is a layup for him with Bacigalupo on the turf. Two straight goals for Archer. He looks like he may be the guy to pull this offense off the carpet. Got to feel a bit for Bacigalupo. He made just an absolutely great save. He's been tremendous in goal today. And what that last effort shows you, Jim, is that it's important to make the second save, just like in soccer. The first save is important, but you've got to get the second save, collect the ball, and get it out of your defensive zone. Shot was missed by Greg Waller. Princeton will retain possession with just 10 seconds left, but Leaf, the shots that Princeton is getting were going in in the first half from this range. Now you can see the momentum changing. They're just a bit off target here in the third period. Very fine line. You aim for just inside the pipe, and the difference is only about three inches. They'll have one last chance here as the quarter winds down, and that'll do it. So Syracuse is crawling back into the game. Princeton still in control, but Syracuse with the momentum as we go to the fourth period. This is CBS. Need a muffler? Fact is, Midas will meet or beat anybody's price. Don't believe anybody ever beats Midas.
It's this weekend. $8 million must go during Luskin's lowest prices of the year on TVs, appliances, audio components, camcorders, computers, and car phones. All at Luskin's lowest prices of the year. Plus no payments and no interest till January 1993 on every Mitsubishi TV and VCR. Plus enter to win two executive class tickets to Sydney, Australia on Northwest Airlines from Luskin's. All this plus service where the Luskin family is always watching at Luskin's, the cheapest guy in town. Night or day, rain or shine. Find out current weather conditions in an instant. Call 832-1200 and enter code 2400 for Baltimore weather. Code 2441 for area beach forecasts. And code 2442 for bay conditions. A service of Donnelly Talking Yellow Pages and WBAL-TV. Let's get busy. Weeknights at 11.30 on Channel 11. Welcome back to historic Franklin Field. Princeton leading by four as we begin the fourth quarter. Man advantage for Syracuse. An illegal stick in between periods was discovered being used by Justin Tortolani. So now Syracuse has a man advantage. And Syracuse has come up big in the fourth period, Lee. They've outscored their opponents by 20 goals. It's scary when you think about those numbers. Also, when you think about them being a man up on you. Gil Martin, no. Lockwood, yes. To five. Now here's a team that's known for its offensive explosions. And that's what has to scare Princeton right now. Three great plays on this series. And it starts in the midfield with Gil Martin. Watch the face dodge. He'll get the ball up top. A face dodge gets him right past the defense. Now the big save by Bacigalupo. But Lockwood beats two defenders to redirect it past the flat-footed goalie. One more time, the shot right off the chest, but then it's Lockwood who outraces, outthinks the two defenders. Big goal for Syracuse. And every time that Princeton has been tested today, they've come back big. They have withstood every challenge from Syracuse, and can they do it again? Here's Bocchalupo way out of net, being pestered by Jamie Archer, and he creates a turnover. Well, this is the offense that starts with the defense of Syracuse. They ride better than any team in Division I lacrosse. They put a lot of pressure on you. That's the kind of pressure that gets the ball back in their offensive zone. The Orangemen still working with the man advantage due to the penalty on the illegal stick to Tortellani. Here's Archer. Just a few seconds left in this penalty. To Ryder, an impossible angle, and he hits the back of the net. How he got that one through, but he found the top right portion of the goal. And now Syracuse is pulled to within two, and Princeton is on their heels. Wait a minute, Jim, there's a little bit of confusion. One referee waved that goal off. Let's take a look. Look at the top of the screen. A Princeton player running in. There's the shot by Ryder. What a rocket. And the goal signaled good. Tierney absolutely livid. It was something in the substitution box. Jim, the penalty had just elapsed. They made a substitution. And I think Tierney's saying that a Syracuse player went on the field that would give them too many players. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight players there. You can only have 10 on the field at a time. There's nine, and there's 10. Now on the sideline, right up here is where the players would come on the field. Nobody is in that area. They look to be legal. And the shot from Ryder just right past a flat-footed Macho Galupo. And there's the referee signaling good for the moment. But upfield, that same official turns around and then says no goal. Now Bocchalupo giving the official the business, and Tierney and Bocchalupo really don't seem like they have much of a case. They're pointing to that substitution area, and when their player came on, they're saying a Syracuse player came with them. The information we get from the sideline from Bob Rule is that even if the player did go on the field, the officials have ruled that it had no bearing on the play, so the goal will stand. And now we have another whistle and a penalty flag. And this time, Greg Waller is going to go off. It's going to be another man advantage for 30 seconds, and Syracuse can now pull to within one. Very dangerous position, obviously, for Coach Bill Tierney. That explosive power play, the extra man play for Syracuse is on board again. Packed and loaded. With a man advantage, they'll go to work and try and set up and get a good shot. Princeton led in this game 8-2. to two. And now, with just a couple of minutes gone by here in the fourth period, they can cut it to one. Here's Charlie Lockwood. It's out front to Gil Martin. Gets it over to Marichek behind the net. Archer misses. Nice save by Bocchalupo. But right there is Bettinger. 
Lockwood sails in. Bacalupo throws the stick. The ball ends up in the back of the net. We now have a one-goal game. Well, we saw Ryder take his own flight to score a goal, and now Lockwood mimics that same pattern. That flight pattern has gotten them two goals. Watch how tough it is for the goalie to save this, because once Lockwood takes off, the goalie, Bacigalupo, is flat-footed. He's sealed against the pipe. That's what you learn to do. You seal that inside area, and then he's in no position to go out against the flying body. He just throws the stick to try to make the save. Well, we've talked about depth and experience, and Syracuse has been able to use that experience. It's now been a little bit over three periods, and they have been able to withstand everything that Princeton has thrown at them. It's now just a one goal game. Morning breath. As soon as I have my coffee, it's all gone. Whether you admit it or not, it's a problem. Okay, I have morning breath, but it doesn't bother anyone. Don't be so sure. Mine's not so bad. Morning breath's not as bad as you think. It's worse. So get scope. Its two powerful ingredients kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. Ah. Was my morning breath really that bad? There's no denying morning breath, so save your breath with scope. So, new jobs, new apartment, new neighbor. Uh, wait a second. What? Okay, uh, let's say you're born with some sugar. Things start to get a little sweet, and then she notices, um... She's got flakes? Not her, you. Hey, my shampoo gets rid of flakes. Come on, you need one that works to neutralize dandruff before it starts. Neutralize it? Whatever. Head and shoulders. But you don't have dandruff. Exactly. Head and shoulders, because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Some people think he's a Superman, but when a 45-year-old has to throw 75 fastballs, even Nolan Ryan's muscles can ache. So after the game, it's the medicine doctors recommend most for sprains and strains, Advil. For me, it's a couple of Advil, and those muscle aches are long gone. And Advil's gentler on my stomach than aspirin. Today, it isn't aspirin or Tylenol acetaminophen. It's Advil. I feel ready to go another nine innings. Advil. Tablets and caplets. Advanced medicine for pain. I'm a big man. Why do so many men stick with Bic? I'm a big man. Because there's a Bic for every beard. Bic regular, a great shave at a great price. I'm a big man. Bic sensitive, Bic babies, tender skin. Bic metal, slim head, total control. Yeah, I'm a big man. I'm a big man. Regular, sensitive, metal. I'm a big man. Two boys fall through the ice. I've never seen anything that scary before. A cry for help, but is there time? It looked like he wasn't going to make it. Rescue 911, Tuesday. Welcome back to Franklin Field. Syracuse has cut the margin to one. And as well as Princeton played in the first half, is as well as Syracuse is playing here in the second half. And that's the scary part to the Princeton team. Look at the shots on goal. First half, Princeton double. And this half looks like Syracuse with a huge lead, 8-22. to 22. So now Syracuse looking to tie the game. It's been a long uphill struggle for the Orangemen. And Dom Finn working down low as the shot knocked away. Great help by the backside defenseman who came in behind Bajigalupo to help make that save. Todd Higgins tries to clear it. And we've got some hitting going on down on the field. You don't think that these guys go home with a bunch of bruises? Here's Don Finn. It's in. The game's tied. Syracuse has finally fought their way back. The sophomore, All-American candidate, Don Finn. Finally gets Syracuse to a tie game. This is one of the offensive stars that has worried Coach Bill Tierney from Princeton. He's been silent all game. Finally tying it up. Roy Colsey starts this. He's a freshman, one of the most highly sought players in high school lacrosse. Gets it over to Gil Martin, who looks all the way to the wing. Don Finn's got tremendous quickness. You can see Bacigalupo go to his knees. Watch how he goes to his knees, guessing low. He guesses low, shot comes high, 8-8. 
They've been shooting high on Bocicalupo the entire second half. Had a chance to talk to him yesterday, and he says that sometimes the high shots do bother him because he tends to guess low. And right now what you're seeing is Syracuse has scouted this team very well, and they know that. Look at the stats. They were dominated by Princeton early. Now they're evening out. They're almost dead even all the way across the board. That's got to worry Princeton. Syracuse is on a run. And as we wind down here in the fourth quarter, you can't help but think that this is really, truly student-athletes. Great save by Bacchalupo. And that these student-athletes are truly playing for the love of the game. There is no professional career to pursue after this. So this is the pinnacle, particularly of the seniors' careers. This is the Super Bowl, no question about it. And it'll be interesting to see right now how Princeton reacts to being tied for the first time in the game. I'll guarantee you they'll be very disciplined. They're in this game because of their great talent and the fact that they do exactly what they're supposed to do. And Princeton gets much of their discipline from Pete Carrill, the head basketball coach. It's interesting that Bill Turney will take his entire team over to watch the basketball practice because he says if you can't learn from watching Pete Carrill and what he does, does with those players, you're blind. Here's Greg Waller backing in. Penalty flag. Shot. Score! This is something that Coach Tierney has schooled his players to watch out for. The rap check from the Syracuse players. They're aggressive. They don't like to wait. Watch Lockwood get a little antsy. As soon as Waller feels the rap check, he rolls inside, protects the stick, and just slam dunks it home. He was waiting for Lockwood to commit. When he got the commitment, he made him pay for it. And Princeton has met the challenge on every occasion today. And if they can hang on, they will capture their first NCAA lacrosse championship. We're at historic Franklin Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It's the oldest football stadium in the United States. A lot of firsts have taken place here. It's the first football stadium with a scoreboard. And the first football radio broadcast and first football telecast came from here. And there could be another first if Princeton can hold on. It would be the first time since 1977 that a team outside the Big Three will have captured a lacrosse title. The Tigers lead by one with time winding down. Rick Beardsley knocks the ball away for Syracuse, and we have a whistle. And we're going to have a foul called on Rick Beardsley for holding. And the Orangemen can ill afford that. With just a minute 30 left, they put a man in the penalty box. Well, this could decide the national championship. Beardsley makes his mistake by keeping his stick on the shoulder and trying to hold low back. Had he used a couple rapid chops or checks, he would have gotten away with it. So with a man advantage, Princeton looks to be in good shape. They've won the Ivy League title this year for the first time in 25 years. They'll be very patient as they'll try and take some time off the clock. The clock is now on their side. Just six seconds left on the penalty. This is where the speed and quickness of Syracuse pays great dividends. Look at the pressure they put on Princeton. And Syracuse gets the ball. Princeton eats up a lot of time, but they don't get a shot off. Here's Brian Tully. He heaves it the length of the field. Bacigalupo, he fans it. It's picked up by Marichek. He scores! What a mistake by Bacigalupo. The old veteran, Tom Marichek, makes Bacigalupo pay for his mistake, but it started with Tully, who made a huge mistake, just throwing this ball down to nobody in particular. Bacigalupo comes out, all he has to do is send it back up. This game is virtually over. In his haste, 30 yards out of the goal, he just fans at it. Too nervous about the offensive players around him. Marichek scoops it up, fakes low on Mariano, goes high on the defenseman, an easy score. But what in the world could Scott Bacigalupo be thinking about? Why is he so far out of the goal? Well, it's a great strategy, but it's bad execution. This team is aggressive. This team is a team that puts pressure on from the defensive end. He just made a mistake, and Marichek picks it up. That's why they're great in transition. Makes them pay for it again. And you really have to feel for Bacigalupo. He has been nothing short of sensational today in goal, and he comes up with a critical mistake at an opportunity at that point to simply ice the game. All he has to do is catch the ball. 
He'll have his chances again in this game. He's been sensational throughout this one. His team has confidence. There's no doubt about that. Overtime looms if no one scores here in the last 38 seconds. Princeton goes on the attack, and we have a whistle. Timeout has been taken by Princeton's Tigers. They'll try and set up for a final play. You know, you get into fitness, you're likely to get an athlete's foot. And it could get pretty tough. The irritating itch, the painful cracking, the burning. That's when you want a medicine that acts tough. Tough actin' tenactin. Tenactin cures even the tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. And tenactin's clinically proven. No wonder it's the antifungal most recommended by pharmacists. Got a tough case of athlete's foot? Get the medicine that acts tough. Tough actin' tenactin. To me, when a woman sweats, it just isn't sexy. Of course a guy's gonna sweat sometimes, but when you're close, who wants a guy that smells? Get closer with Arid Extra Extra Dry, the anti-odor, antiperspirant. I trust Arid. You were here. He has the traveler's checks here. Uh-oh. Well, now there's American Express traveler's checks for two. The first checks either of you can use. Don't leave home without them. Well, the strategy has been set by Bill Turney for the Tigers. A national championship now on the line. Just 37 seconds remain. Leaf, where do you go and who? Well, we know the heroes by now. Lowe is a control guy. A couple of different people can go ahead and be the finisher. Reinhardt is certainly one of them, number 11, one of the best midfielders that Princeton has. I would say the matchup they've had trouble with all day long, Syracuse has, has been Brian Tully. He's been a little bit slow against all the Princeton people. Watch that matchup. Reinhardt to win. Nope, he doesn't get it. Mad scramble, and Princeton, with 14 seconds, will have another shot. Closest team to the ball goes out of bounds, retains possession on a shot. Here comes Kevin Lowe. He'll look for someone, the great assist man. Finds toward Alani, on Alani at the pipe. Rebound comes out in front, mountainous ground, no. Off the helmet of Winship, and we have overtime. Unbelievable, those two shots, either one could have gone. One hits a pipe, one hits a helmet. OT coming up. Well, Justin Tortolani had a wide open shot. You can't ask for a better shot in this situation. Tortolani was the single player who brought them past the University of Maryland to get them into the semifinals. Watch low as he finds Tortolani, and then he just takes a left-handed shot right off the pipe, far side of Saran. That shot, Winship just looks it right into his face mask. Beautiful job of saving the possible game winner from Saran. Under normal circumstances, that might hurt, but I'm sure he was happy to take that shot in the head. You see the reaction of Roy Simmons Jr. His team has battled back all day, and now we have overtime in the lacrosse championships for the first time since 1986, when North Carolina defeated Virginia 10-9. Here are the rules for overtime. They play sudden death. The first team to score wins. They'll be playing a four-minute period. For Princeton, their last NCAA championship was all the way back in 1964 in fencing, so this represents quite an opportunity for them, Leaf. And, Jim, they have much more experience in their overtime or close games, Princeton does. Two overtime wins in this season, plus they're 4-2 in one-goal games this year. Syracuse, 0-1 in one-goal games, and they haven't played any overtime. Usually, Syracuse is way out in front. And we haven't talked about it. Syracuse, 13-1. Their only loss came to Johns Hopkins. Mad scramble taking place as we get into overtime, and it's finally picked up by Fazy. And Syracuse will get underway, and they'll have the first attempt to win this game as they go into their offensive set. Everybody knows what's at stake. You've seen the key players. I think Dom Finn right here, number 26, matches up speed and quickness-wise as well as anybody against the great Princeton roster. So they send it over to Dom Finn. He'll work against Andy Moe. Takes a slap to the head. Works free, takes the shot, saved by Bacigalupo. 
Nice shot, nice save. Well, Bacigalupo just stands in there as calm as you please, and one shrug of the shoulder makes a save. Dom Finn with an All-American type move comes in, little dip move, protects the stick, and Bacigalupo very casually raising the arm to make the save. So they'll try it again. Here's John Barr. Working on Mo. Sends it out front to Ryder. Ryder had a good shot at it, and he goes wide to the right. Once again, Syracuse will retain possession. Two good shots now for Syracuse. And John Barr was the hero of the game against Johns Hopkins to get him into this final. We haven't heard much from him today. Syracuse in control of overtime so far. You see the slides coming early. Princeton eager to slide. They made a decision before this game, Jim, that they were going to go ahead with the slide, something that many teams don't do because of the great stick work of Syracuse. Here's John Barr. He's looking for an opening. Works against Moe. Andy Moe all over the defensive end of the field. Riding him very well, and we have a whistle, and there's going to be a timeout on the field. Timeout taken by Syracuse. Syracuse. Everyone has a dream, a vision deep inside. With all the mutual funds out there, I needed an easy way to help me compare them. We make it easier to follow your own lead. With Schwab's free mutual funds performance guide, I can compare track records on over 500 funds. Always there to give you just the help you need. Help yourself at Schwab today. I think they'll have shampoo there. We might not have head and shoulders. We're only going to be gone a week. Right, a week. Head and shoulders helps take care of the condition that causes flakes every day. Because you never know. You know? Head and shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. I know. I know I should use a tartar control toothpaste, but mine tasted too strong. Introducing mild tasting tartar control crest smooth mint gel. <laughs> you were right about that crest. My mouth thanks you. It's tough on tartar, soft on you. This man's incredibly close, comfortable shave comes from the Norelco razor. But to see how he got it, we have to go back to when he began shaving. Not just above the skin, but below it. Here, our patented lift and cut system lifts the hair so when it's cut, it can actually drop below skin level without the blades even touching your face. Try it, and you'll keep going back, back to Norelco for a perfect shave. Norelco, we make close, comfortable, Tied at nine. We're in overtime. Syracuse will inbound the ball. Two minutes, four seconds left to play. What a game we have been treated to. Jim Gray along with Leif Elsbo and Bob Rule from Franklin Field in Philadelphia. And Roy Simmons is keeping that first line in there. He's got his six best offensive players. Nobody would expect any different. Work it around the horn. Greg Waller strips the ball from Barr, and they'll go the other way. Well, a great double team by Mariano set that up. He came off the crease to double team and get the ball back for Princeton. Here's David Morrow. Falls down to Tortolani. In front again. Another pipe job. The second time he's hit the pipe. One left-handed shot earlier on hurt the left pipe. This right-handed shot hits the right pipe. We stay at nine, and we have another timeout. This time, taken by Princeton. Here we go as the fast break comes down, starting on the defensive end. Look at the movement by Princeton to get the ball in the seam against Syracuse. Through three players, wide open shot against Duran, who's been doing a very fantastic job of moving across the plane of the goal, covering up as much area as possible. Tortellini two inches off of winning the game twice. Had 32 goals on the season, and he's hit the pipe a couple of times today, and he's going to remember hitting the pipe a lot more than any of those goals throughout the season. But they'll get another shot at it here. The sophomore, Scott Reinhardt. Oh, and he's being choked. And Mike Doyle just put his stick right up around the neck, and he's going to go off a penalty against Syracuse. Well, Reinhardt has been killing the Syracuse team with that out-of-bounds play. He's got tremendous speed. Earlier today, he scored against Reggie Thorpe, the best long sticks player. Now, Roy Simmons puts his smaller guy, his faster guy, Mike Doyle. He's quicker, but he makes a critical mistake by letting him get behind him. 
Well, it's all in front of the Tigers right now. A terrific opportunity with a man advantage. Saran's had pressure all day. Nothing like this, though. And Todd Stratton, Jim, took that shot right in his stomach. Number 31, the defenseman, helping out Saran. Time winding down on the penalty. A shot by Tortolani. No good. So they get two good shots off during the penalty. Neither of them are they able to convert on. And now they'll get one more attempt, possibly, before the penalty goes off. Shot by Morrow. They do get the shot. The penalty is off. They've withstood all the pressure. You can call this guy Saran Rap because he has had a total rap on the net. Here's Kevin Lowe. Chris Saran once again. Great save. It's picked up by Morrow. He throws it away. But Tortolani comes up with it, and Princeton, who has dominated here in overtime, will have another opportunity. And this is the matchup they want. Tortolani against Tully, number 41. Princeton working for a final shot here in the first overtime. Picked off by the defense and into Saran's stick. So we go the other way with just five seconds left here. Ball is picked up by Lockwood. He's aware of the clock. He's got to shoot, and he can't pull the trigger. So we go to double overtime. No blood here in the first one. Remember, it's sudden death. We remain tied. This will be the third double overtime in NCAA final history. In 73, is a 10-9 Maryland win over Hopkins. In 1980, Hopkins won 9-8 over Virginia. And there's been some absolutely great goaltending by both goaltenders. Let's take a look. This time it's Chris Saran, and he has just been magnificent here in overtime. He's had a great second half, and the pressure has been intense on both ends of the field. But again, here's Saran coming up big. A stuff shot against Lowe. He went high on Lowe, you might say. Now Bill Turney is having his say. Sending out instructions. What a game we've been treated to. Good to have you along. We go to the second overtime. Again, it's a four-minute period. One timeout per side, and it's sudden death. The first team to score, they will be the new NCAA champions. Very familiar position for these two guys, Bob Fazy and Greg Waller. They've been doing it all day. And it's picked up by Andy Moe. Moe on the go. Andy to the championship three out of the last four years. But watch the speed of Andy Moe. Nobody has been able to stay with this guy all day long. John Barr trying to catch him here. In the middle of the screen, top left, Tully. He should be sliding over. His indecision cost them the backup. No backup to help, and Moe gets the easy shot on Saran. Championship for Princeton. How ironic it is, Lee Felsmo. The one man who played on the 2-13 and 13 team of Bill Turney when he took over the program five years ago now comes up with a championship goal in a championship season. The Princeton bench, you don't think that these guys are going to have a good time tonight? They'll take this with them the rest of their lives. And Roy Simmons Jr. might remember this the rest of his life. They keep saying they want it, they want it. It's like they don't believe it, but it is over. And let's go down to Bob Rule, who's with Coach Tierney. Congratulations. 
did you ever expect to be in this position when you started five years ago with a 2-13 and 13 record? Well, I told them we could do it you know, five years ago, but uh, to be real honest, I wasn't quite sure, but out there today, this thing is, is just all heart. When this isn't the best talented team, this is the team with the most heart. These kids, what can you say? The traditional handshake and what we saw, Leif Elsmo, a very fine, fine line between winning and losing. And no one can deny this championship to the Princeton team. They got 100% out of their players. A beautifully coached game. And it's the players who are going to enjoy this thing for a long, long time. Let's go down to Bob Rule, who's being mobbed. All right, all right. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. You, can, you can follow me later. Scott Bajaluba, first of all, congratulations on a great game. Thank you. Tell me what you predicted yesterday. I said we hold them nine goals, we're going to win the whole thing. You're clairvoyant. Andy, the last guy left yeah. from that team that went 2-13. and 13. How do you feel today? Feels great. We had to go through a lot of losses and a lot of hard, hard seasons to get here, but it's a great feeling. And it's a tribute to Coach Tierney, the best coach in the yeah. country. Okay, wait a minute. Before you go, before both of you go, first of all, what was in your mind when you got that face off and went down and scored that goal? Well, we, we figured that if, if um, Todd Higgins got the ball, we we're going to call a timeout. But if either Wally or I got it, we were just going to try to push it. Usually they were cleared through. Taylor Simmons cleared through, and I just saw the open net and shot it. Terrific, Andy. Congratulations. Thanks, now, Scott, yeah. is this true you have an exam this evening? Uh, I got an exam at 7.30 tonight, but I think it's going to get bumped till tomorrow morning, hopefully. Well, I hope the professor's real nice. Yeah, Thanks a lot, so. Scott. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, that young man has already passed the test that he will remember for the rest of his life. Ten to nine. CBS Sports coverage of the 1992 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships is sponsored by Norelco Patented Lift and Cut Shavers and by Charles Schwab, helping investors help themselves. Stay tuned to CBS for more NCAA action. It's the Men and Women's Outdoor Track and Field Championships. <laughs> For Lee Belsmo and Bob Rule, this is Jim Gray saying so long. Princeton's not only captured our hearts, they've captured the title. This royal throne of kings, this earth of majesty, this little world. United brings you non-stop service from six U.S. cities to London's Heathrow and the land of poets. This earth, this realm, this... Mm -hmm. Are you coming in? Oh, no. Are you kidding? I'm on my way home. Oh, if I went in, it would probably turn into a zoo. Or I'm recognized every place I go now. I heard your good news. That you're not going to trial, I mean. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations to you, too. Oh, you mean Stuart and me. When's the wedding? Next month. Sydney, I'd like to invite you, but Stuart's parents are just... Oh. I understand it might be a little awkward. <laughs> I should have returned your telephone call. Yeah, that would have been nice. You really did get in over your head, didn't you? I just got caught, that's all. That's enough, isn't it? I didn't do anything wrong, Pamela. You really don't think so. Pamela? We'll talk soon. We'll have lunch.
today's interracial couple. Are they finding that happy ending, or are they too busy fending off their critics? Interracial relationships in the 90s, on the next Bottom Line, Sunday at 11. A woman in a man's land. I never wanted a life of convention. I never did, and I never will. She brought order where there was chaos. I'm going to see to it that you're arrested and tried for attempted murder. She gave hope where there was despair. Am I back? Get no. the reverend. You're not going to heaven, not yet anyway. And she taught one man how to love again. The Adventures of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, Saturday at 8 on TV 11. Bird Shock and Carol McEnroe, tonight at 6 and 11 on TV 11 News. next on CBS Sports NCAA Championship. Wall has the ball right through his leg. Andy Moe comes over, gets the stick on it, and has it for the Tigers. He sprints to the top of the box. Fast break opportunity for Moe. He's going to take a shot. Go! 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 Passes ahead. What a hit. What a pass by Smith. He's got Ryder. Ahead to Matt Ryder. And Ryder shoots and scores! Syracuse ahead. Take it down the left side of the box to Michael Watson. Watson moves in. And turn around, shot, he scores! Watson gives Virginia the victory! Hard hitting, high scoring, last second heroic. That's what lacrosse is all about. After today, Princeton or Virginia will be the 1994 NCAA champion. championship is more than just an event it's more of a festival tailgate picnic kids at play after exciting quarter and semi-final round action including overtime victories a record crowd is expected today in the hotbed of lacrosse college park maryland Welcome to Bird Stadium at the University of Maryland and the 24th Annual NCAA Men's Division I Lacrosse Championship. Today's title game pits Virginia's Cavaliers against the Princeton Tigers. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Joy. Virginia employs an explosive run-and-gun offense that's looking for the school's first national championship in 22 years, while Princeton returns several core stars from their 1992 national championship team. Joining me is Leif Elsmo calling his 11th national championship. You couldn't ask for two teams with more different styles. Well, they really do, Mike. Virginia's a run-and-gun style team. They like the offense to initiate from the midfield. They want the ball to touch a lot of different sticks, and they have a lot of different guys on offense, attack and midfielders, that can really crank the rock. Virginia has a lot of players who can score. In fact, in overtime, they beat the nation's number one team in the semifinals, Syracuse. Freshman Michael Watson with the game winner. Well, he's sensational. He was the player of the year in the ACC. He is joined by a sophomore that he played with for nine years, Timmy Whiteley, a great player who distributes the ball very well. And the finisher on that threesome is Miller. He puts the ball in after he gets it, usually from Whiteley. Well, they're going to be sorely tested because Princeton has one of the top defenses in the nation. And it's led by Scott Bacigalupo. Since he set foot on the field at Princeton, they have been contenders. He's first-team All-America goalie two years in a row. He is definitely the heart and soul of the defense for Princeton. Now tell me about the very different style that Princeton employs on offense. Well, they want ball control, and they want Kevin Lowe, number 16, to touch the ball, control it, and distribute from there. Virginia's challenge will be to take Kevin Lowe out of the game, close him off from the attack, and that will keep the scoring down for Princeton and give Virginia a good chance to win. These two teams met earlier this season. Princeton scored a solid 14-6 victory. 
But of Virginia's two losses to other teams this year, they've avenged them both. And they want to avenge this one, obviously, to win the national championship. But to Princeton's credit, they have nine seniors finishing up their career, led by Bacigalupo and Lowe. They've played Virginia three times over that span and haven't lost this team yet. It is the Princeton Tigers versus the Virginia Cavaliers for the national championship. CBS Sports coverage of the 1994 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championship is sponsored by Charles Schwab and Company, helping investors help themselves. Scope, a whole new feeling of clean, introducing new baking soda Scope. And by the GM Card, today's financial vehicle. Still using a full commission broker? You could be missing out on a lot. Like a broker who's available anytime you want or state-of-the-art investment software that's easy to use to get both trade up to schwab at charles schwab you can manage your investments around the clock and speed smart software lets you place trades get quotes even research stocks and at schwab you'll enjoy low commissions too for a better way to trade trade up to schwab grandpa chef tell us how basketball used to be <laughs> Well, the basket wasn't always 20 feet tall. What about 100 yard court? Not even close. What happened? All sport. New All Sport. Unsurpassed taste. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy. This is a body quencher. After All Sport, the game was a breeze. Until they put in the moving basket. All Sport. The game will never be the same. Before you saw the horizon, the rise of facsimile technology, Canon lowered the cost. We're in touch with the future, so your office can communicate with advanced laser precision today. When the rest say you can't, Canon says you can. The laser class series of plain paper faxes only from Canon. Now you can. For more information, call 1-800-OK-CANON. Welcome back to College Park, Maryland, where it's a beautiful 80-degree day. Let's show you how these two teams reach the championship round. In first-round action, Virginia annihilated Notre Dame, while Princeton earned a bye. In the quarterfinals, Virginia defeated arch-rival North Carolina. Princeton got past John Hopkins in overtime. In the semis, Virginia upset number one seed Syracuse in overtime, while Princeton avenged their only loss of the season, defeating Brown. Today, Virginia and Princeton play for the national championship. Don Starzia is the head coach of the Cavaliers in his second year, and he brings one of the most potent offenses in the nation. They are young, led by sophomore Tim Whiteley. He's the feeder. Sean Miller, the pure finisher. Michael Watson, a go-to guy, the hero of the game against Syracuse. The midfield has scored 66 goals this year. Greg Trainer has scored half of them, a great left-handed shooter. On defense, they're led by Captain Craig Ronald, but the quick feet of Matt Crisp will be tested today against Lowe on Princeton. And the goalie, James Ireland, is having the best year of his career. For the Princeton Tigers, head coach Bill Tierney is in his seventh season. The last three years, he's made the Final Four, including the 1992 NCAA Championship. This attack is led by Kevin Lowe, the all-time leading scorer for the Princeton team. The finisher, Scott Conklin, will be very critical today. In the midfield, Scott Reinhardt gets half of this midfield's 55 goals for this season. Tomio, though, a great shooter from out front. On defense for Princeton, Peter Ramsey is a very solid force, but Nick Lane controls, and Todd Higgins, the best athlete of the three. And in the goal, Scott Bacigalupo, two-time first-team All-American, the best goalie in the game. Virginia wearing blue and orange today. James Ireland setting up in goal. At the opposite end of the field, Scott Bacigalupo gets his defense. Of course, they have the light jerseys because they are the higher seed. They have the confidence today, Mike. They've been here before. That could be key. Princeton controls the faceoff, and number 16, Kevin Lowe, sets up his offense. You'll see the attack for each team, control the ball on that end of the field. The defense will be playing tightly against them. Midfielders play between the two goals, and each team must maintain onside by keeping four in the defensive end, three in the attack end. All right, this is Scott Conklin for Princeton, working his way around the crease. To Tomeo. A very deliberate style of offense for Princeton. Mike, this is exactly what they want to do. Be controlled, look for good opportunities to get great shots. They need to make their shots count. Taylor Simmers, Paul Murphy fires and misses. 
When the ball goes out of bounds on a shot, the team closest to it as it crosses the line takes possession. That was typical Princeton offense. They'll control the ball from behind, look for cutting midfielders to come off the crease, pick off the defenseman, and get the big shot on the goalie. Nice check by defensive specialist Woody Moore. Knocks the ball free, and here comes Moore, the senior from Rockville, Maryland, for Virginia. This defense and specialist midfield unit is exceptional. They've got great speed, great quickness. Moore, Dixon, Smith, and Newman. They really create problems for offenses all the way through the season. Now, did the pass break run out of gas here, or are they just setting up? Well, you're right. It does not look like the typical Virginia offense. And we'll have to see what Dom Stargy wants to do with his offense. But typically, they like the running gun. When it's in transition, they like to get the shot off. This is Tim Whiteley being checked closely by Ramsey. Beats Ramsey to the inside, looking to feed Miller. No. And the play whistle dead. There'll be a penalty. Mike, Tim Whiteley did a great thing there. Ramsey was playing very aggressively on the feeder. Whiteley, Whiteley had to beat him to the goal to take away some of that pressure. He created the offensive opportunity. Nick Lane called for an illegal body check. He came in too high. Watch as Whiteley comes in, getting ready to feed. Nick Lane slides over, hits him up around the head, and that is illegal. Anything below the shoulders, above the waist is legal. The high checking gives him a minute in the box. So Princeton will play one man down, although Lane is releasable if Virginia should score. Whiteley with the ball, finds Miller, he scores! Mike, it's so critical to take advantage of these extra man opportunities, especially in the championship games. They might get four during the whole game. If they score half of them, that could be the critical difference. On this particular play, they got an overload to the right. Look at all the white jerseys out of position. It leaves a man open on the back door. Miller's the guy. He fires it home before he falls in the creek. Watch Whiteley on the right side of your screen. He looks left, feeds right. That's beautiful. It's a deceptive move he's used to a great deal of success all during the season. Miller is usually his target and a big goal for the Virginia Cavaliers. Princeton controls the faceoff. This is Taylor Simmers working a sea of blue jerseys. Tomio. He can fire it. Brings it low and it's off the pipe. Kevin Lowe picks up the ball. Kevin Lowe against Chris who has great quickness in his feet and is making good stick checks to keep Kevin Lowe away from the net. Matt Chris on low. <laughs> they set a pick for him. And he'll dish off to Scott Conklin. Marked by long stick defender Craig Ronald. He beats Ronald and ties it up. Scott Conklin did a great job of coming off the crease to help out low. He gets the ball and goes one-on-one -on -one with Ronald, who's not used to going out into the wing area and having all that space behind him. Here's Conklin coming off the crease, circling around to get the ball. Look how the defense is marked very tightly against all the Princeton players. Conklin comes to the right. Meanwhile, his players clear out to the left. That creates this alley for Conklin to go one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to have to go left because Ronald is shading his right hand. He's a strong right-hander. He gets inside the body of Ronald, lunges, and scores before he hits the crease. And the penalty flag against the defense is negated by the goal. Princeton has controlled every faceoff. Shot, bounces in front, and Kevin Lowe picks it up. Mike, good stick checking by defense of Virginia. Look at the sticks in there, very active around the ball. Joe Wilson wants to clear it. He is triple team. Big rainbow there. And Conklin with a nice check puts the ball on the ground. Conklin into his stick, and he scores. Princeton takes a 2-1 lead. Well, Conklin gets the reward of his own hustle. He started this play by checking the stick of the defender, putting the ball on the ground. Then Tomio picks it up. He gets it checked out. Conklin hustling back, picks up the loose ball, an unsettled defense, beats Ireland on the shot. Virginia controls and tries to get their fast break offense in gear. Michael Vaughn across to Watson, the freshman. Watson beats his man, goes around behind the goal and out of bounds. Sideline saying there was a pass. They want the possession to go to Princeton. Whiteley, Ramsey giving him a little more room this time. Looks for a feed, finds a Knight. Score! It's tied again. Knight, only a freshman, maybe the biggest goal of his career. He beat Lane, and Nick Lane is a veteran, but he took his eye off the feeder for just a moment, didn't see the ball coming, and the score tied at two. Of all the 
places you can go to take care of your car or truck. Only one lets you earn up to 10% of your parts and service costs towards a new GM vehicle. Your GM dealer. Because only your GM dealer is a member of the GM Cards New Accelerated Earnings Network. A select group of businesses that can double your GM MasterCard earnings with no earnings cap. Which helps you get a new car or truck. The GM Card. Today's financial vehicle. It still bugs me that I waited to try Old Spice High Endurance just because I thought all the owners worked the same. Dumb. This proved the best. Better than the leading stick. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer. It protects better. You can't ignore that. Or this guarantee. Try it. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. You gotta figure anyone that serious about the odorant deserves a serious shot. Come on, take the high endurance challenge from Old Spice. I did. Are you a high school senior? You wanna play next year at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Ask your coach or guidance counselor for one of these student release forms. Fill it out and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in NCAA Division I or II. For more information, call 319-337-1492. From Red Grange to the modern grace of Olympian Tracy Calkins, the flavor and pageantry of all 21 men's and women's collegiate sports come alive at the NCAA Visitor Center. Come celebrate the magic moments in college sports at the NCAA Visitor Center, open year-round in Kansas City. Ion Sports. Visit Japan for the Osaka Waterfront International Triathlon. Then it's on to South Africa's Talking Elephant. Sunday on CBS. We get set to begin the second quarter with the score still tied 2-2. Two to two. And the first quarter, Princeton controlled tempo, but look at this. Virginia controlled the offense by getting 17 shots, seven more than Princeton. But three saves by each goalie shows you that Virginia is just not hitting the goal as many times as stars you would like. Princeton controlling the tempo of the game. Virginia trying to get their rapid-fire offense ignited. To be David Jones, the junior. Got a short stick defender on him, so Jones wheels, fires left-handed. Nice, stick high save by Bacigalupo. Mike, there are only two short stick defenders on the field, four long sticks. They like to get that matchup, a good shooter against a short stick defender. Greg Trainer is tripped up, ball on the ground, and <laughs> finally Princeton up with it, down again. Mike, aggressive riding on both ends of the field makes it tough to get the ball at the field. And Sean Miller goes down hard. Sean Miller has had a knee injury. He has been nursing it through the later part of the season, and right now he has had trouble getting up. Looked like he gave out on him. Miller had Virginia's first goal of the game, his 27th of the season. He is hurt. Mikey creates such a great target for the feeder, Timmy Whiteley. This will be a huge loss to the team if he cannot continue. Watch how he's going for the ground ball, being chased by Nick Lane. He'll plant his left foot way out to the left. It just doesn't hold up to the stress of a six foot three, 200 pound body, asking too much of his injured left knee. From the reverse angle, you'll see how he puts it way out to the left. It just doesn't hold up, and he goes down. As Miller limps off, Virginia loses not only their most accurate shooter, but he's a junior, the elder statesman of this offense. That'll leave a sophomore and two freshmen on the attack. The next guy off the bench is number 25, Doug Knight. He's already played today. He's already scored one goal. He's a young kid, but he has the same finishing ability as the junior Miller. Jeff McBean loses the ball to the persistent check to that defensive midfield. And here comes Whiteley for Virginia. And checked off the ball by Ramsey. Brian Tomio hit hard, retains possession, and brings it across for McBean. McBean trying to feed. Simmers fires. Deflected away. And here comes Virginia. A couple of lost opportunities. Conklin missed the handle. So did Simmers. They could come back to haunt them later on. Tommy Smith to Michael Watson, and he scores. This is becoming a trademark move for Michael Watson. He has a great change of direction when he faces the goal. 
this shot is very similar to the one that beat Syracuse in the semifinals. Well, let's show you that one. The two-time high school All-American. Freshman here at Virginia scores the biggest goal of his life right here. And then what? He runs away from the celebration. I knew if I got caught on the bottom of the pile that I, you know, I wouldn't be able to move, and that, that scares me. So and that ended up happening, and I started you know, screaming, get off me, get off me. And uh, I just didn't want that to happen. That's why I was kind of running away. It all, it all happened so quick, I just thought I, I didn't know what to do. I just started running. <laughs> Well, as much as Watson hated it, I'm sure he'd like to repeat it again today. Chris Driggs controls the faceoff for Virginia, looking to feed Trainer, And pass intercepted by Murphy. Paul Murphy, the senior from Penfield, New York. Brings the ball across midfield for Andy Hubbard. Hubbard works it down the wing. Out to Jeff McBean. McBean waits. Draws the double team, dishes off, Hubbard fires. Conklin with the rebound, and it goes out of bounds. Nice deflection saved by Ireland. And Conklin is exactly where he wants to be, the mark of a good creaseman. Tierney, obviously a little bit distressed that he lost that opportunity. Kevin Lowe, three-time All-Ivy Leaguer. And Matt Chris is all over him, trying to keep Lowe from getting a pass off. Lowe to the inside, comes toward the goal, and the shot is wide. Matt Chris with a great check from behind to make that shot go to the left of the goal. Kevin Lowe has been pretty well stymied. And that's thanks to the defense of Matt Chris. Watch the defensive check from Chris, number 28. He works them very hard. Now Lowe has a chance to get inside position. He's very strong. One chance to take a shot. We haven't seen him in the offensive flow. Chris is doing a great job. Princeton sets their offense once again. And works the ball back around behind the net. Taylor Simmers, Paul Murphy scores! Nice high shot beats Ireland. Well, Conklin sets us up with a screen in front of Ireland, but watch Ireland. He starts going down a little bit, trying to get a better view around the screen. Meanwhile, a shot high and hard just beats his reflex. Don Sarzia sees his one-goal lead disappear. Princeton has tied the score at three. Final minute of the first half. Princeton's first-ever Ivy League Player of the Year, Kevin Lowe. Pass to Simmer. Fires off the stick of Joe Wilson. Scott Conklin, he's a scoring threat. He's got two today already. Conklin looking. And it's Kevin Lowe. Scott Reiner cutting in, bobbles it, scores! Princeton takes the lead. That's Kevin Lowe's favorite target. Scott Reinhardt didn't pick it up cleanly, but the rebound goes in off of the check of Ireland. That goal is a big one, a huge goal, 4-3 to three lead now for Princeton. Kevin's older brother, Darren, was the Ivy League all-time assist leader when he played at Brown. His younger brother's now taking that honor. Virginia in the final second. Puts the ball on the stick of Michael Watson. He's been hot. Closing second. Watson fires it wide as the period ends. That shot told the whole story for Virginia in the first half. A lot of shots, but not that many on cage. Princeton with a one-goal lead at halftime. Credit line has nothing to do with your value as a person, okay? Sure, Gold MasterCard has a credit line of at least $5,000, but that doesn't make you a better person. Well, I don't know. Maybe it does. I mean, if knowing that no gold card is more accepted on the planet lets you relax and just have fun, then yeah, I suppose it could have some effect. And you can use your Gold MasterCard at cash machines all over the world, so you can get money in drachmas or blear or seashells, so you can tip generously. Which any waiter will tell you is the true measure of how good a person you are. Gold MasterCard. It's more than a gold card. It's smart money. Gates revolutionary suspension automatically lowers the car at high speeds for better handling and less wind resistance, which raises the bar for everyone else. The Lincoln Mark 8. It raises handling and performance to a whole new level.
Are you colder than I am? Oh, oh, I need to wait on the hot day here. Heads up, look out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you see anything yet? Just a second. Settle down. He's, he's opening the refrigerator. Oh, it's not a store brand. I can't believe it's through you. Watch your balls off our place. It's, wait a minute. Oh, it's, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's, Remember how frightened we all were when Kimberly Bergalis said she got AIDS from her dentist? Now it turns out that may not be true. A brand new story, 60 Minutes, Sunday. Welcome back to Bird Stadium at the University of Maryland, where Princeton's Tigers lead the Virginia Cavaliers 4-3 to three at halftime. Today is the culmination of the college lacrosse season for 1994. Let's take a look at some of the other NCAA division champions. In Massachusetts, they're cheering for Springfield College, which avenged an early season defeat at the hands of previously unbeaten New York Tech. Springfield broke out to a 5-1 lead and held on for a 15-12 victory in the national championship. In Division III, top seed Salisbury State finished their season 16-0, defeating perennial Division III champion Hobart, looking for its 14th title. Hobart was 42-1 in postseason play going into this game. Jake Berge, whose dad played at linebacker for the Philadelphia Eagles, scored five for Salisbury State. In women's lacrosse, Division I, number two seed Princeton defeated the top seed Maryland right here on Maryland's home turf. Maryland had been undefeated. Princeton finished at 16 and 1. No such upset in Division 3. Trenton State won its 57th straight game, earning its seventh championship. Princeton can achieve something no school has done in the history of NCAA lacrosse, win both the men's and women's championships in the same year. But to do that, they'll have to maintain their 4 to 3 lead over Virginia. Lee Felsmo is with Dom Starzia, the coach of the Cavaliers. Dom Starzia, Princeton has been controlling the tempo and really having things their way as far as the style of the game. Uh, I would disagree a little bit. I think we've had the ball and we've had good opportunities. Uh, we haven't sunk enough shots yet. Defensively, we've done a, new, a good job of switching around. Uh, you know, we would like to have more goals on the scoreboard and all, but we've had good chances. We want to keep playing just the way that, that we're doing right now. Dom, it seemed like on some transition plays, you were content, though, to pull it out a little bit where uh, maybe historically during the season, you go ahead and take the gunning shot. Well, I think that even in a game like this, you want to be patient. Uh, we, get, we get the ball up and down at our end for a long time in a defensive end. We finally give it up to the offense. We want to take our time, give our chance, uh, give those guys a chance to get a breather and, uh, and get a good opportunity in the offensive end. What do you have to do to win this thing? We've got to pick up more ground balls. We've got to shoot better, mostly. You know, we've had good opportunities. We've got to put a couple in the back of the net. We'll be back to College Park, Maryland to start the second half after this word from your local station. Jessica defends a young Indian accused of murder. Kill anybody. I think that's it. The number one drama on television. Murder, she wrote. Then, her rape shattered her life and family. How can she put the pieces back together? I don't know if you still love me. Taking Back My Life, Sunday. This week on Dave, Terry Gard, Jack Palance, Dan Rather, Siskela Deber, John Mellencamp, and Howard Stern. Plus, Mujibur and Sarah Jewell on the road. This is CBS. Yes. Yes, yes, it's a good thing you've waited to buy a new car because Bob Bell Ford in Glen Burnie has 2.9 financing with 48 months to pay on Escort wagons and Escort sedans. You may never see rates this low again. Save thousands in finance charges and Bob Bell discounts. But hurry, this is a limited time offer. 2.9 financing now at Bob Bell Ford. Minutes from Beltway Exit 3B, Ritchie Highway, Glen Burnie. Accidents happen. So Science and Kirk ask that you wear your seatbelts, drive defensively, and never drink and drive. Science and Kirk can now help you in Baltimore, across Maryland, Washington, D.C., Virginia, and Pennsylvania. So if the unfortunate does happen, call Science and Kirk's free injury hotline seven days and nights a week. Because if you have a phone, you have a lawyer. Science and Kirk. Bird Shock and Carol McEnroe, tonight at 6 and 11 on TV 11 News. Princeton leads Virginia 4-3 as we get set for the third quarter of play. 
Leaf, did you expect a higher scoring first half? I think everybody did, Mike. These two teams have a lot of offensive power, but each team does not want to lose this one. A lot is on the line, as we know, and they're really controlling the tempo. You have to think it's a Princeton tempo game, but obviously Virginia feels comfortable, too. You heard Starzy's comment. I really think for Virginia to win, they're going to have to get more production out of their midfield. Push the tempo. They've had some transition opportunities. They just didn't take them the way they normally would during the season. They pulled it back out and settled it down. For Princeton to maintain this composure, which they have done, and get enough goals to win, I think they're still going to have to get production out of Kevin Lowe, who hasn't scored yet, and maybe Taylor Simmers. Their attack has to step forward. For Virginia, their midfield has to step forward and score. A Virginia 30 shots, Batchigalupo had to make only seven saves, while Princeton, with 26 shots, tested Ireland nine times. And Sean Miller is lost for the game with that injured left knee he sustained in the second quarter. That will be a blow to Virginia. To start the second half, a whistle as Chris Griggs moved before the start of play. Technical foul, they give the ball for to Princeton. Paul Murphy comes across to set up the Princeton offense. And Mike, what Murphy's waiting for here is the specialty face-off unit. On the wings on his face-off are a long stick player and a short stick player, specialty face-off guys. They are now off the field, his regular offensive unit's on. Scott Coughlin looks around from behind the goal. Back to Murphy. And if you look at Kevin Lowe, he's being marked pretty closely, but it has not been eager to push the action and fight for the ball. And Murphy, shot is wide. Starzy a little bit concerned. He had a great first half for his team, but he hasn't gotten control of this game yet. It could get away from him in the second half. Ball remains at the Virginia end. Kevin Lowe looking. And again, he is very closely marked. Jeff McBean. Looks to get something going. Has a one-on-one. -on -one. Good matchup, Mike. Short stick defender now on McBean. McBean spins, now he's double teamed, comes back around, outlet pass, and Scott Conklin fires home his 43rd of the season and third goal today. Well, the aggressive defense for Virginia has been causing a little bit of problems in that they're giving opportunities to Princeton. Watch the double team start here, leaving the backside wide open. Conklin gets where he has to be to be open. He does that so well and puts the shot past Ireland. Princeton takes the biggest lead of the game, 5-3. to three. And comes right back. After Virginia's offense is again off target. Scott Conklin racing in. Marked by a long stick defender here. And Mike Scott Conklin being very active, coming out to get the ball because the Virginia defense closing down low. Taylor Simmers, Joe Wilson picks the ball off the ground. Ireland. Outlet to Woody Moore, and here comes Virginia on that transition game. Pass break opportunity. Moore to Michael Watson, the freshman. Who scores? Nice high shot by Michael Watson. His second goal today. These are the kind of shots that scared Bacigalupo when he watched the tape of Virginia against Syracuse. His defense has to maintain position, keep the shooters out of that close range. I kind of live and die by my defense because if they do their job, then it, it makes it a lot easier for me to do my job. And, uh, you know, I think with UVA, it's, it's going to be a question of, you know, trying to keep them out of, you know, when you, a guy has time in the room from 10 yards, you know, to crank one up on me, it's not, a, it's not an ideal situation for me. So uh, you know, that's the key for our defense is to stop those types of situations. Virginia wins the faceoff and comes right back on offense, but this time, Leaf, it looks like they're taking a little more time setting up. And they may have changed their offensive shooting philosophy because now they look to be shooting higher. That shot seems to give Bacigalupo much more trouble than the low shot does. Greg Trainer here, very closely marked. Gets the shot off stage. Look at how he smothers the low shot. Bacigalupo just throws his body at the low shot, very successful. Tim Whiteley leading a fifth man. Fine trainer shot, and it's in the net. The high, hard rocket shot just gives him a little bit more trouble. That one finds the twine. Virginia doing a much better job this half of shooting on the first team All-America. Craig Trainer, the highest point scorer of all the Virginia midfielders, beat Pachigalupo up top. Nugent for Virginia against Murphy in the faceoff. And the ball's whistled dead. 
Mike Infraction on the defense for Virginia. They stepped over that restraining line, came out of their zone before possession. Technical foul that gives possession to Princeton. And it's Princeton, it's Kevin Lowe. And he's isolated now. The whole team is getting out of the way for his offensive push. Lowe looking, comes toward the net. Conklin scores. Beautifully done, Conklin again in that same spot where a finisher gets himself positioned. It was all Kevin Lowe getting the attention of the defense. He'll come in one-on-one -on, -one on Chris. Now the defense is getting ready to make a slide. They all want to help out. Watch them start coming. Blue jerseys start moving. And as soon as they do, Kevin Lowe finds the backdoor man open. It happens to be his best target in Conklin. And he gets his fourth goal of the day. Princeton retaking a one-goal lead. We'll be right back. One of the ways Ryder makes your move easier is by putting a translucent roof in the trucks we rent. Does that make moving easier? Clearly. Ryder, we're there when you need us. Here's the thing. It's a credit card. It won't bring the world together. Actually, maybe it will. I mean, MasterCard is an official sponsor of the 1994 World Cup. So soccer fans from all over will be coming to America to cheer and eat too many jumbo dogs. And since no card on the planet is more useful, they can all use their MasterCards for hotels and car rentals and silly hats. And nothing brings people together like silly hats. So I guess MasterCard will bring the world together. Wow, I hope there's enough parking. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card. It's smart money. Good evening, class. This is Learning to Program Your VCR 101. Step one, setting the clock. Press you don't need an advanced degree to program your VCR. Just the One for All VCR Pro, the easiest to use VCR programmer that's also a universal remote. Easy because it leads you through VCR programming with step-by-step -step instructions. Now buy a VCR Pro and batteries and get a $10 rebate. Or any select Flintstones video in any One for All remote and get a $3 rebate. One for All, the easiest of all. Still going to your full commission broker, even though your best interest may be overshadowed by a hunger for commissions, unwanted sales pressure, and biased information. If so, there is a way out. Trade up to Schwab. At Charles Schwab, our brokers don't work on commission, so the information you get is always unbiased and totally free of sales pressure. And at Schwab, you'll enjoy full commissions, too. For a better way to trade, trade up to Schwab. One of the ways Ryder makes your move easier is with a computerized reservation system that makes short work of paperwork. Because the sooner you get your move started, the sooner you're finished. Ryder, we're there when you need us. Meet fellow summer's fast action heroes at one of NASCAR's hottest races, the Michigan 400, Sunday on CBS. Of the fourth quarter, Princeton has a one-goal lead, and Scott Conklin has been stellar. He has four of Princeton's six. Today's attendance, a record 24,730. Over the three days of this tournament, more than 60,000 people have seen lacrosse here at College Park. How does that stack up with other NCAA championships? Well, both today's championship game and the semifinals drew more people than could squeeze into the Charlotte Coliseum for the men's Final Four and Basketball Championship. For Virginia, Michael Watson, who lettered in four sports in high school, being marked by Paul Murphy, a short stick defender. Watson, score! And Watson takes a left-handed shot for the first time today to get that goal. Murphy, with a short stick defense, didn't stay stick on stick. Watch the stick head of the defender, Murphy, in white. When Watson goes to the left hand, Murphy does not switch. It gives the stick of Watson a clear shot at the goal, and the velocity was there to beat Pachigalupo. Third goal of the day for Watson, and the officials want to look at his stick. Mike, each head coach gets one shot at a stick of the other team. This is a free stick check. It has to be legal. It has to be between 40 and 42 inches long. That width has to be six and a half inches. You have to see ball, no daylight, above the ball in the pocket. The pocket can't be too deep. Also, there has to be no camber in the aluminum pole. They'll look straight down as Watson's concerned. They say the stick's okay. They get it back to the player at the last free check that Tierney will have. If that stick was no good, it goes out of the game. Even pull that goal right off the board. The goal stands, and we are tied at six. 
As Fritzen comes back on offense, they've got a different look. Well, Kevin Lowe, the all-time leading scorer, is on the bench. Freshman Todd Eichelberger is in the game. It may be just to rest low and maybe to try to work him into the midfield to get a better matchup. But right now, the all-time leading scorer of Princeton is not a factor in the offense. Eichelberger for Scott Conklin. Antonio cutting in front of the net, but waits and sets up again. Conklin. Closely uh, marked, ball knocked loose. Picked up by Reinhardt. Back to Reichelberger. Looking to feed, gets Reinhardt and scores. Reinhardt's sense of cutting has been so critical to the success of the midfield. Here's an All-American player that always comes up big when you need a goal. With the senior low on the bench, the freshman Eichelberger runs Princeton's ball control offense. Watch to the left of the screen. Reinhardt's man will slide to help one Eichelberger. He follows in behind the slide, gets open in the seam, and just punches it past Ireland. But quickly leave Virginia's trying to get their run-and-gun transition offense going. We haven't seen much of it today, but it causes such great problems for defenses. The six skills of Virginia are exceptional, and the goalies hate this kind of offense. Michael Watson. And it's wide. A flag and a penalty. Well, Michael Watson really paid the price for that shot. He's only about 5'8". Watch this face dodge to get himself in close to Bacigalupo. Two players converge. Both of them hit him high. That illegal body check could be from above the shoulder aspect or just because it was a late hit. But it'll cost Andy Hubbard a minute in the penalty box. So now with a man advantage, let's see what Virginia can do. Well, they're starting in a 3-3. Last time, they rotated Wetley behind. They're doing it again. Watch the rotation of Virginia players to the crease. They'll look for a shot in close. Tony Nugent with the shot. Deflected wide. A great defensive check by Princeton. They made adjustments. They're not going to give Virginia that easy shot. Paul Murphy coming out. Ground ball. Murphy. Nick Lane. Can't pick it up. But they retain possession. We've seen intense riding from both teams. Virginia putting two and three players on the clearing team. It has not been easy to get the ball up the field today. Pass deep for Kevin Rawl, who waits for his offensive unit. Trying to set up a play here. And Kevin Lowe again was on the bench for a while here late in the game. They brought in a fresh face, Eichelberger. Tierney continues to do some different things on both ends of the field. Taylor Simmers with the ball. Reinhardt cutting across. Score! Reinhardt has tremendous speed. He cracks the defense of this Virginia team with that cut across that crease area, hanging up his defense, and gets the two-goal lead for Princeton. Here's the choice. Thompson's now or rebuild later. Thompson's now or repair later. Thompson's now or replace later. Over time, water invisibly weakens unprotected surfaces. Suddenly, you've got damage. Used regularly, Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer helps stop costly damage. Keep up your protection. Maintain your investment with Thompson's now. Also protect with Thompson's stain. The only stain with Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofer. Whoa. Control is everything. Once you got it, everything else just falls in place. That's why I use this stuff, Perk Plus. One smart shampoo, control enhancing conditioners for hair that's easy to handle. It just works. My hair does what I want. That's enough for me. Perk Plus. No fuss. The federal government's Department of Health and Human Services, in partnership with the NCAA, provides funding and facilities for the National Youth Sports Program. Now in its 25th year, NYSP offers economically disadvantaged youngsters important experiences in sports and enrichment activities through summer programs at NCAA colleges and universities. I'm Bob Schieffer. O.J. Simpson's in jail facing arraignment on double murder charges after a freeway chase that ended at his home on tonight's Evening News.
We asked Scott Reiner if a championship win today would be sweeter than the one he captured two years ago. Personally, I, I think it's uh, a little bit more special this time around because as a senior, you feel like it's your team and that, you know, you're the one leading the younger guys through it. So, uh, you know, it was a great experience my sophomore year, but, you know, if we could win the national championship this year, I think it'd be a little bit more special because, you know, it's the seniors' team. And what a special group they are. Nine exceptional players, including six starters from today's game. They've made this Princeton team the dominant team over the last three years in the game of lacrosse. They're 51 and 8 over the last four years. That's more than resurrected the Princeton program. It took this guy, Bill Tierney, to the highest level in the game, the elite level. And they are one of the best teams ever in the sport of lacrosse. And of course, it all starts in the defense with the best goalie in the game. Princeton. Moves the ball ahead and sets up the offense. Taylor Simmers can't get a shot off, and Ireland smothers it. That was a great check coming from the far side. The defense slid. Simmers had a great shot, but it wasn't for the heads-up play of Captain Craig Ronald. So Virginia comes back, but this time moves the ball up very slowly. Great matchup. Short stick defender against their big left-handed shooter, Trainer. Greg Trainer works it in and walks away. And the slide came over, Mike. They've got the long stick there now, which means there's a short stick player against one of their attackmen. Number 25, Knight. All right, Doug Knight. Comes around behind the goal. Close in, takes the shot off the pipe. Jones with a score. Michael Galupo throws his body in front of the first shot by Knight. It finds the pipe, the shot does, bounces out, and Jones follows up against an unsettled goalie and gets the big shot and goal for Virginia. Watch this. Knight comes inside the short stake defense. Off the pipe. Bounces out right to Jones, and he fires it against basically an empty net. David Jones of Davidsonville, Maryland. A junior. Brings Virginia within one. Every time Princeton thinks they're going to get a little bit of breathing room, a two-goal lead, Virginia's been able to close that gap back to one. Off the faceoff, the ball whistled dead for a push, and Virginia will have possession. So Virginia, once again, looking for that long stick versus a short stick defender matchup. Shot by trainer deflected. Mike, the long stick becomes such an advantage on defense because it can be up to 72 inches long, a six-foot stick, and the short stick can only be 42 inches long. So you're talking about a difference of maybe 30 inches that really helps your defense. David Jones for Virginia. Ooh, we're looking for Driggs. He couldn't handle it. And it's out of bounds. Stars are calling a different ride package. They are very aggressive in rides. They've even been known to have a 10-man ride. Reinhardt fires the ball toward the goal as Ireland had come way out to mark an attacker. But Ireland handles it and brings it back to Woody Moore. Well, Mike, it was the 10-man ride, which brings Ireland out of the goal. Reinhardt tried to hit the open net, but Ireland was too fast, got it back in position. Virginia trails by one with less than two minutes to play. And look at this matchup. This is trouble. Short stick defender against Timmy Whiteley. Watch the slide coming from Princeton. Oh, lost opportunity, no shot. They bounced up beautifully. Watch the white shirts all bounced up. Now this is Trainer up top. Trainer's their leading scorer. 34 goals this season and one today. Here he comes. Oh, shoots across the goal mount. And Doug Knight will be closest to it as it goes out of bounds. Trainer knew that the left-handed shot had little or no angle coming down that side, so he wraps it around behind his back to gain about 15 degrees and get some white targets behind Mike Galupo. Tim Whiteley, the team's leading assist man. To Doug Knight. Knight ties it up. Faking high, dropping low, putting it in the net. This kid does not look like a freshman. He is in for Sean Miller, the junior finisher for Dom Sargia. And as a freshman, he has put himself in a very pressure situation. He gets the ball between the defenseman Nick Lane, who's sliding out, and Bacigalupo. Now the ball comes in tonight. He protects the stick. He has one fake to make before he drops it under the leg of Bacigalupo. He faked up high where they've beaten Bacigalupo all day and then put it on the ground to tie the score. Virginia he is fired up and on a run. Andrew Dowd. 
Oh, watch out. They threw it outside the box. In the last two minutes, you cannot bring it into the offensive box and then throw it out. You'll lose possession. That's a young team mistake that gives the ball back to Princeton. Princeton has a chance to capitalize. One minute left in regulation. Virginia has been very aggressive all day on defense. It could cost them here. Let's see if they continue to press the offense of Princeton. Paul Murphy looking to come around from behind the net. Jeff McBean. And McBean will set it up. Second ticking down. Plays the pick. Comes around. No opportunity. Reinhardt. He was looking for Conkling coming down on the far side of the crease. Wasn't open. Of course, possession critical. They didn't force the feed. Reinhardt comes around. Look. And he's wide. Ireland chases. But it'll be Princeton ball coming back in with 16 seconds. Pressure on Starzia's defense. They're aggressive, as I talked about. He has to be a little bit more controlled. Tough to do for this racehorse team. Kevin Lowe. Will he feed or look for the last shot in regulation? Here he comes. Looking. Ball pops loose. Mark Dixon with a Hail Mary. And we'll go to overtime. Tom Starzius Cavaliers come back and force the overtime. It'll be sudden death played in four-minute periods. And the most critical thing about that period is the one timeout each coach gets. They'll get possession, call the timeout, and set up what they hope will be the winning play. Well, in this tournament, Princeton beat Johns Hopkins in the quarterfinals in overtime. Virginia got by Syracuse in the semifinal in overtime, and in 1992, Princeton won the national championship in sudden death. Wallach has the ball raked through his legs. Andy Moe comes over, gets a stick on it, and has it for the Tigers. He sprints to the top of the box. Fast break opportunity for Moe. He's going to take a shot. Go! 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 Virginia's only national championship came 22 years ago here on this field. When that picture was taken, today's goalie, James Ireland, was six months old. And you don't know pressure like he's getting right now. This is intense. Scott Bascalupo, the other end, has been here. He will be much better suited to this overtime period. Ball control offense for Princeton. Run and gun for Virginia. And it's Princeton controlling the faceoff. Princeton setting up the offense, and the ball is whistled for a timeout, possession timeout for Princeton. Well, Tierney has one shot here to win it all. He doesn't want it to go beyond this. Michael Watson hit the game winner against Syracuse. In that game, he was Dom Starzy, a surprise weapon. Some other coaches, uh, some other college guys were struck by the fact that we went to a freshman late in the game to win it. Uh, you know, in terms of experience, where this team is, uh, our freshmen have now been in the Final Four as much as the seniors have, and so we don't really... I differentiate very well between our freshmen and our upperclassmen and our, and, our, and our young guys. And Michael was a kid that has a lot of poise and we have a lot of confidence going to him. And he's no surprise anymore. Watson has three goals today. And it's no surprise that Kevin Lowe is inbounding this critical play. Kevin Lowe looking toward the goal, looking to cut across, and this time comes way outside with the ball. Well, I think that's his second or third option. Everything he wanted was closed off. Now they go to a midfielder out front. Jeff McBean, a sophomore from Rosemont, Pennsylvania. Works the ball around behind the net. One-on-one. -on -one. Now he's in a dangerous position because he can feed or shoot from here. McBean, double team. Looks for Conklin. Kevin Lowe backs it up. He scores! Princeton wins it. his way down to the field. Let's take this pause and come back and speak with the winner.
credit line has nothing to do with your value as a person, okay? Sure, Gold MasterCard has a credit line of at least $5,000, but that doesn't make you a better person. Well, I don't know. Maybe it does. I mean, if knowing that no gold card is more accepted on the planet lets you relax and just have fun, then yeah, I suppose it could have some effect. And you can use your gold MasterCard at cash machines all over the world, so you can get money in drachmas or lire or seashells, so you can tip generously. Which any waiter will tell you is the true measure of how good a person you are. Gold MasterCard. It's more than a gold card. It's smart money. This summer, get ready to roll at Napa, the place more people rely on to keep their vehicles running and to help them save. Your choice, AC or auto light resistor spark plug, 74 cents after rebate. Napa Silver Oil Filters are as low as $1.99. And spruce up for summer with color line spray paints, just $1.29 per can. So stop by your nearest Napa Auto Parts store today and get ready to roll. We keep America running. We keep America running. Not one of these guys has a single gray hair. Is it by chance or is it by choice? New Clairol Men's Choice. It's a technological breakthrough. A new way to blend away the gray that's so natural looking, no one can tell you did it. New Clairol Men's Choice is an easy to use gel that won't drip. And it works in just five minutes without changing your natural hair color. No gray hair, and it looks so natural. Is it by chance or is it by choice? New Clairol Men's Choice. Four goals for Scott Coughlin, three for Scott Reiner, one for Paul Murphy, and just one for Kevin Lowe, but it was the big one. And Princeton becomes the first school ever to win men's and women's titles in the same year in Division I. Let's join Leaf with the Princeton Tigers. All right, Kevin Lowe, you were pretty much out of the offensive flow. The last point, take us through it. Uh, well, basically what was going on, we, would, uh, we took the ball out on the side, we set up a play up top, and they defended it well, and then we just took a guy, we inverted, and uh, what happened, he threw a pass to the crease, I was there just backing up so we could maintain possession, and I just got it in a good spot, and I finally hit the goal after two long games, I finally hit it. Compare this to 92. Oh, this is great. This is unbelievable. 92 was... I don't really think we knew what we, what we really accomplished. It was a great feeling. Now, last year we came and we lost, and we knew how hard it was to get back and how, how hard it was to get back on top again, and it's just really sweet. Congratulations on a great game and a great career, Kevin Thank Lowe. Thank you. Here's the coach, the winning coach. Bill Tierney, your team dominated the tempo of the game just as you wanted to do. You were being dominated in ground ball categories by a team that was probably physically maybe a little better than your team. But your team did what they had to do to win. I don't know if better is the right word, but certainly more athletic. Uh, they, Virginia's an outstanding team, and Dom Stars is just one of the best coaches there is in the game. And they were prepared for us to shut down a lot of our offense, and we couldn't get things going. James Island played a great game in the goal, but we did have the tempo the way we wanted it. And we knew that if it was a close game that we'd been there a lot of times before. And hope that it could come out this way. Again, comparing to the 92, this championship must mean a lot to you. It really does because of this class of seniors. You know, there's been a lot of hard work, a lot of prayers, a lot of just a, a lot of effort on, on these guys' part. And uh, you know, I couldn't be uh, prouder to be a part of, of the group of, uh, of seniors that we have this year. Congratulations, Bill Terry. Thanks. Princeton is the champion, but Virginia will graduate only four seniors and looks to have a lacrosse dynasty in the making. For Leif Elsmo, I'm Mike joy so long from college park maryland tomorrow dale earnhardt and ernie irvin take on defending champ ricky rudd in the michigan 400 at 1 p.m eastern time followed by cbs high on sports at four o'clock CBS Sports coverage of the 1994 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championship is sponsored by MasterCard. MasterCard, official sponsor of the 1994 World Cup. Ryder, we're there when you need us. And by Thompson's Water Seal Waterproofing Formula, the brand to trust for all your waterproofing needs. is uniting the world with thousands of flights to cities on five continents proudly features a plane no bigger than your hand it comes with mcdonald's friendly skies meals for kids because when you're big you should always remember the little united comply the friendly skies tonight real men are back at war with the world's deadliest gang that's a girl i can see that chuck norris is walker texas ranger this is CBS.
This Moment with the Pride is sponsored by Giant Food. Quality, value, and service, that's Giant. The real stories of the pride of Baltimore are people stories. Meet her supporters, the builders, her crew, the fans, here at home and abroad. It brought us international recognition. It made us feel that we were different. Celebrate the triumph of the human spirit as our worldwide message of goodwill continues. Aboard the Pride, legacy of the Baltimore Clipper. A television premiere June 23rd at 8 on WBAL TV 11. There's a place where freshness abounds, where caring about quality is second nature, and where you always get a good value. It's a place where you feel welcome and find everything you need. From the joy of sharing wonderful food with family and friends to the simple flavors that life has to offer and for everything in between. It's your giant. From Television Hill, this is WBAL TV 11. Next, Bird Shot and Carolyn McEnroe with the news. Weather with Tony Pan from the Forecast Center. This is WBAL TV 11 News. By one year, we won't fall. Perhaps you do have some empathy for the troubles of O.J. Simpson. But do not lose sight of the fact that it was Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Gold who are the true victims. At a press conference today, the L.A. state prosecutor tries to focus this real-life movie on the fact that two people have been murdered after last night, a highway chase and a standoff. Good evening, I'm Carolyn McEnroe. And I'm Heard Shock. Right now, football legend O.J. Simpson is locked alone in a 7 by 9 foot cell at the Los Angeles County Jail. He will not be allowed visitors until his arraignment, which could come as early as Monday. Simpson's attorney, Robert Shapiro, spoke with the Hall of Famer by telephone. Simpson was crying and apologized for fleeing, according to Shapiro. Carolyn? We have a live shot from Los Angeles that we're trying to get for you. We'll get that as soon as possible. Despite all the support and the sympathy, the former football great is charged with double murder. And as Lisa, Lisa Salters reports, many people here in Baltimore still don't believe the story that's unfolded with the man who many see as an American hero. I used to like him when he played football when I was little. Like most people, this Baltimore teenager was an O.J. Simpson fan. He liked to watch the juice pour it on on the football field. He took the fall of an American hero hard, also like most people. I'm shocked. You know, he was such a figure for a lot of people and grew up watching him play. It's, it's a shock. Dr. Casey Hughes is one of those people. She's a psychologist now, but has been an O.J. Simpson fan much longer, since his Heisman Trophy winning days at USC. She says, understandably, the fall of O.J. Simpson has touched the entire world, as it does whenever our heroes fall short of our expectations. And I think it's unbelievable, and the first reaction uh, is undoubtedly shock, and then possibly some anger that may be directed at several different uh, sources, and, and then I think finally sadness, and uh, maybe disappointment. But though shocking for adults, experts say what's happened to O.J. Simpson is even more devastating for children. Adults may be able to understand and see O.J. Simpson for the human being that he really is off the field when the lights and cameras are turned off. But kids, they say, just see an idol destroyed and have difficulty understanding why. Lisa Salters, WBAL, TV 11 News. But despite what's happened to O.J. Simpson, thousands of his fans are still cheering him on and wishing him the best as was evidence last night during the standoff at his home. Now that O.J. Simpson is in custody, one of the big questions surrounding this strange tale is, can he get a fair trial? A prominent local defense attorney says yesterday's episode can be characterized as irrational, and Simpson's actions may not have hurt his defense. Christina Gutierrez appeared on the TV 11 News at noon. That his actions yesterday are as consistent with a man utterly distraught at the loss of a family member, utterly distraught at the specter of going to be charged in a capital offense mm -hmm. uh, that would mandate his imprisonment pre-trial uh, would certainly lead to the same kinds of irrational behavior. Gutierrez represents indicted Baltimore controller Jackie McLean, who attempted suicide while awaiting trial on charges of stealing money. And in other news tonight, an investigation is underway into a plane crash that killed 12 people. The Learjet was heading into Dulles Airport from Mexico when it crashed into the woods nearby the runway.
The passengers on the plane were flying into the Washington area for the World Cup game. Investigators say they'll probably be at the scene for the next few days. And investigators also say that heavy fog may have been a factor in that crash. So believe it or not, it is a few degrees cooler today, but we are right in the middle of the summer's biggest heat wave. I went out today to see how some of you are coping. It's a little hot, but I'm not complaining. We were stuck in the house all winter, so it's, it's not too bad. Kelly Keener and her two daughters were on their way to a swimming party to cool off. <laughs> it was very, very hot. Morgan Allen was in charge of soft drinks at a fundraiser. Out of more than two dozen cases of cold drinks, she returned with only two left over. Yeah, I barely had enough beverages. <laughs> and I had to go for ice twice. <laughs> the best place to be on a day like this is right here in front of the ice freezer. Local grocery stores were selling lots of it, along with ice cream and frozen yogurt. Air conditioning companies have been swamped with calls for repairs today, but if you can't get your fix right away or don't have any other place to go to cool off, try a mall where it's free. Well, we decided to go shopping, you see, but the, uh, the things on the list are not, like, urgent, urgently necessary, so I think it was just an excuse to get into the air conditioning. Percy Turner is one of the lucky ones who has a job inside. Oh, uh, it's wonderful. Right out there in that hot sun, burning up. I mean, I would melt. <laughs> but this woman would rather stay outside on a day like, like this. Hot weather. She actually likes to make that love the heat, and she drinks ice coffee. Okay, I like the hot weather. I prefer it. I prefer it to cold weather. I don't like air conditioning. I like to work outside, and I have, I'm much healthier if I stay outside. I've heard other people say that they get too cold in the air conditioning, so once they get used to it, they don't mind the heat as much. Well, now back to the O.J. Simpson saga. As we mentioned earlier, Simpson is locked alone in a jail cell in Los Angeles. Dave Failing has the latest from L.A. O.J. Simpson has now spent the first of what could be many nights in jail. What led up to his capture here yesterday in Los Angeles was a human drama, the kind of which has not been seen before here in a city that has seen it all. It was O.J. as we've never seen him before, the mugshot taken as he was booked for the murder of his ex-wife and her friend. Simpson is now in a private cell in the L.A. County Jail, where guards are maintaining a suicide watch. Now, we are very concerned about the possibility of Mr. Simpson harming himself. The question is, how much fuel do they have in that white Bronco? With a former teammate driving and the nation watching on live TV,